Guru principle is extremely strict and the strictness made many people could not conform to the ideals of a disciple. In those days the Guru had to be absolutely the authority and it was the Guru who would decide which disciples he'll have. And one had to go <coughs> into great tapasya, to great penances, to even become a disciple. And this hardship was the only way the Guru used to judge. Gurus would always live in jungles and they would select their disciples, very few, very, very few, and they had to go and beg food from the neighboring villages and cook food for their guru with their own hands and feed them. That sort of guru business is not in search. That basically we must understand that the difference between those styles of guruship <coughs> and that we have now is this that very few individuals were given the chance to become the Guru, very few. And these few also were selected out of quite a lot of people and they felt that there was something really special that they are being selected, chosen, and that whatever <coughs> uh, they will have to go through is all welcome. With this idea they became the disciples. But Sahaja Yoga is a very different thing, I would say just the opposite. First of all, your guru is a mother and who suffers from Sandra Karuna. At the slightest things that happen to you, my eyes get filled with tears. So, <clears throat> as a mother, to be a guru is a very difficult thing. But at the same time, for you to achieve heights is also difficult because you get lost when I love you so much and in that love <coughs> uh, you forget sometimes that the progress in your being is very slow. It is important that in Sahaja Yoga you have to be strict with yourself. That's why I said that you have to be your own guru, which people do not understand what it means. You have to be your own guru means you have to guide yourself, you have to treat yourself as your disciple 
and you have to trim yourself. If you do not understand the responsibility as such a being of working it out yourself, everything, you cannot move very fast because it is a different type of relationship between the guru and the disciples. So first I have always said you become your own guru. <coughs> so you have to make a lot of introspection and fix your ideals before you I am sitting. You have seen me how I am. I can eat anything, I need not eat at all for days together. I can sleep anywhere, I may not sleep at all. I travel for miles together untiringly. I have this energy because I am a guru of myself also. So the first thing is that there should be a lot of introspection. What's wrong with me, not wrong with others? What's wrong with me? Am I seeking the comfort of my body? The attention, is it on my body or on my spirit? If so, what am I doing? I think best thing is to write it down. <clears throat> Can I sleep on the grass? Can I sit on the stone? You have to make this body work. Can I sleep any time I like and can I keep awake any time I like? I've seen people doze off. The reason is this, not that they're bad or in any way indisciplined people, but because inside they're tired. If you're tired inside, then you feel tired all the time. You'll see on the television, if you see people in the West, they're always oh, sitting like this because they're so very tired. Why are they so tired? They don't work so hard. So introspect how you behave. Now when you start introspecting yourself, you'll also start introspecting your surroundings and your styles and your methods and what you are doing to yourself because of the conditionings of the outside. Now the conditionings of the outside <clears throat> in the West are of a psychological nature. Indians have other conditionings which are also quite surprising or we should say the Western people, they must wash their hand ten times, even if their skin comes out, they go on washing like mad. They must have a bathroom attached to them all the time they must have their baths. If they don't have bath, they are not comfortable. They have other conditionings also. All kinds of stupid conditionings they have, but the conditionings that we have in the West are more psychological and that's why you cannot find out what's wrong with you. The physical conditionings are not so dangerous. You can get over them or you can manage. But when you have conditioning of your psychology, you cannot understand what's wrong with you. <clears throat> now, if you see, if you introspect around, 
what you will find is a very subtle thing. Firstly, that because of the wars maybe, I don't know why, but everybody is afraid of everyone. Especially, I think, Freud. Because of Freud, even the mother is afraid of the child. And all these things to Indians are absolutely, they can't understand this. But you people know that very well. They won't touch anybody, they won't hug anyone. First of all, when they used to play football, they used to hug, but now I see they don't hug, they just touch hands like this. <laughs> After some time, I think they may just do like that or something. So frightened that nobody, even the children I've seen, are frightened of hugging their parents. So the expression of love is not there. And when there is no expression, there is no love inside. And that's how it goes on drying up and drying up and drying up. There was a little girl in Sahaja Yoga and I had some present for that child. She was quite young, must have been about ten years of age. So I gave it to one Sajogi, Western Sajogi, that you go and give it to her and say that I have given. No, mother, I won't give. I said, why? She'll misunderstand me. I said, what will she misunderstand? It has gone so much into the heads of people. And this has created really the psychological insecurity within me. From very childhood this insecurity has been working. And that's why you are frightened of each other. Even of your parents, of your brothers, your sisters, psychologically you are suffering. And when first I came to England, they used to say, it is the insecurity. I said, what insecurity? The whole world is afraid of the Western world. And what are they suffering from insecurity? They have made everybody insecure all over the world. And why? What are they insecure? They are insecure within themselves, in their own society, in their own family, in their own groups. They are so much frightened of each other. So the first thing, you should be fearless. You are a Sahaja Yogi, you are no more immoral, <coughs> cannot be immoral. If all the time, if you start thinking that you are immoral and if you do something it is immoral and that you have to go and do some confession somewhere, then what is going to happen to you? What sort of a personality you will have? We have to change this by changing ourselves. So among Sahaja Yogis there should be no insecurities but maryadas. You must know how to respect each other's privacy. The second thing that if you find in the Western mind which is a very common thing, that they are bombarded by criticism. There are so many critics that the, now there are no more artists left, only critics are criticizing critics. All artists are finished, they are all the time criticized. Somebody will come in, there is an education on criticism, they may not know how to play uh, any instrument, they may not know how to sing, but they can criticize all right. So all the time in your mind is a way that you always feel that somebody will criticize if you do this. All the time the fear is there 
that somebody will criticize. So, should I say or not? As Sir Yogis, you shouldn't worry about these stupid people because they are blind and if they want to criticize you, let them criticize, what does it matter? Makes no difference. But this you have to build up within yourself. Now the third is even worse, which I don't know if you have noticed or not. I don't know how it has gone into the heads of the Western minds that you must always see to the other side of the bank, even if you are standing on this side, to be fair, and never to say something that you are sure of. Like you ask anyone, how are you, he'll say, Always. Nobody say, will say, I'm perfectly all right, nothing wrong with me. What's wrong? Perfectly all right, thank you very much. But it is never. They're not sure of themselves all the time. It's shaking. And this shaking inside gives you a personality which can never progress. Progress comes when you put your step forward, you put your foot firmly on that point and then put the second step forward, like as you climb on a mountain. But in the first place only if you are still thinking that it's halfway through, then how can you go further? You'll only move on two steps, this or that or this or that. This is another very big psychological uh, detergent, I should call it, or detrimental thing for your program. Now the third thing you have learnt, which is also third or fourth maybe, that you must argue out yourself. Like you have a problem, you'll come and tell me, Mother, this problem I've got. This is very common with everyone. I have this problem. I'll say, all right, this is the solution. Then you will come out, no, 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 but in this, this will happen. Then you tell another solution, no, 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 Mother, this can be this way. All right, you tell third solution, no, Mother, in this, this can happen. Tell fourth, this can happen. You are standing against yourself all the time. Then I have to say, this is your problem, not mine, and I am giving you the solutions and if you want to solve your problem, better take a positive attitude. The brain is this way. <laughs> In our Hindi language we call it ulti khopri. You are all the time arguing against yourself. So how can you progress? This is another great problem of the Western mind that it doesn't try to face any problem as your own but go on arguing with yourself like a uh, lawyer, you see, there are two lawyers, one yourself, another lawyer, go on arguing. So is a double personality in the body, being, is not a single personality. As I said, it is very, very psychological 
that people have to take to this kind of a turn suddenly without understanding how dangerous it is. With the enlightenment of your brain, this should disappear.